thoroughly tested against a fired-up Tennessee. The Volunteers, picked in the preseason to be one of the conference leaders, had gotten off to one of their worst starts ever. To correct the problem, Coach Majors had used the off week before Alabama to reshuffle the coaching staff and completely revamp both offense and defense. The Vols felt they had found the right combination and a victory over Alabama would be just the ticket to turn the season around. This game would best be remembered by Tide fans as the return of David Smith to the lineup. Just four weeks after surgery, Smith limped onto the field in a specially designed knee brace. Many in the stands and listening on the radio questioned whether the injured knee could take the battering it would surely receive this day. Some wondered if Smith would be too rusty after his four-week layoff to be effective. But no one doubted this young man's courage. Smith wasted little time in laying to rest any fears about his ability. Alabama's third possession, he directed a six-play, 97-yard scoring drive, which included a 61-yard pass to Todd Richardson. The tie defense provided the next six points when John Mangum picked off a Jeff Francis pass and raced 60 yards down the sideline for a touchdown the high point of what was to be an outstanding day for the Tide defense. Thanks to their kicking game, Tennessee enjoyed excellent field position most of the day. But again and again, the defense managed to hold at crucial times. David Smith directed two fourth-quarter touchdowns to clinch the game. One capped off by David Castile's seven-yard run on a broken play, and the other on a 55-yard dash by speedster Murray Hill. Tennessee would score with 13 seconds left to keep the score respectable, but Alabama came away with a solid 28-20 win. Crimson Tide Football with Coach Bill Curry is brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. You can't beat the feeling. By Golden Flake Snack Food. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. By Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. By Ziegler since 1927. Bring the great taste of Ziegler's home to your family. And by Amsel, with more than 175 banking offices throughout Alabama and Northwest Florida to serve you. And now, Alabama football head coach, Bill Curry. It became more clear to me this year than ever that at some point in its history, the University of Tennessee selected the University of Alabama as its primary rival. With Tennessee struggling a bit this year, um, the coaching staff was reshuffled up there, a new defensive scheme was put in, the players were aroused, 93,000 were there, and we were very happy with a 28-20 to 20 win. And I think any time you win in a game with that kind of intensity, you've done something special. And our defensive unit deserves a lion's share of the credit. Our offense came along a bit. With David Smith coming back, we were able to grind and grind and grind until we finally got something going in the running game and broke some touchdown runs, won a long run by Murray Hill toward the end of the game to give us our winning margin. The 93,000 were there in Nayland Stadium, and uh, it was a heck of a football game for uh, people to watch. Our kicking game, I suppose, was about as ragged as a kicking game has been since I've been coaching. That's what we take great pride in, is playing that extremely well, and I think the game could have gone better for us, considerably better, had we been consistent in the kicking game. But that's something that we'll correct, and we were, we were able to come away with a win, and it was a big one for us. Here's the opening kickoff. Tennessee won the toss and took the second half option. Now they were penalized there, and we got the ball in good field position to start the game. 
uh, were not able to do anything with it. Tennessee's defense was uh, vastly superior to what it had been. Their scheme was excellent, the kind of thing that has been giving us problems. And as I said, as the game wore on, we were able to grind them down and get something going enough to win the football game. So Chris Moore punt, and they um, come up with the football and begin their first drive. And there's Reggie Cobb, their great running back. Spencer Hammond made the tackle there. Quarterback Francis is a great quarterback. He, he's uh, over a 60% career passer, and uh, we really want to mix our coverages. Here's Kermit Kendrick with a great interception as they tested us deep early. The defense was consistently excellent all day long, with the possible exception of the final drive when the game was pretty much out of reach. But you can see them swarming to the football, and they were able to bottle us up early. Here again, Francis to Harper. Great game by Keith McCants, the outstanding young linebacker. Another great game by John Mangum. Big hit here by Greg Gilbert on third and two. Time and time again, our defense was able to stop Tennessee in short yardage situations. Third and ones and third and twos, we were able to get them stopped. But their punter, time and time again, was able to kick us deep in their, into our territory. This time, we're driving off our one-yard line. And here off the bootleg is a great throw, a great catch. David Smith to Todd Richardson. Here's David coming back. Good presence in the pocket to Marco Battle for a short game. And here's Wayne Shaw, a native of Tullahoma, Tennessee, who has not seen a great deal of action, who scores the first touchdown of the game behind good blocking by Roger Schultz and Chris Robinette. Chris Robinette was a starter for the first time in the Tennessee game. And David Smith, although he was somewhat rusty, gave us enough good plays in the game, as I said, that we were able to win. So we jump out seven to nothing. And here's Tennessee with the football. Gang tackling by the Alabama defense there, led by Derek Thomas, our All-American linebacker. Willie Wyatt, who had another outstanding day. Now David twisted his knee on that long not the long touchdown series, but the next series. So Vince Sutton came on at quarterback. Once again, we stall. Here's Chris Moore on the punt. Woods on the return with a tackle by Wayne Shaw and Butch Lewis. Here's Francis back, and the receiver falls down, and John Mangum is right on the spot. A 60-yard touchdown run on the return as he intercept, intercepts the quick out. We'll see a replay of this. John has just gotten stronger and stronger in the last two weeks. Everybody goes to work on him because he's not a real big guy. But he keeps himself in very intelligent football position. He makes a lot of key tackles for us. He defends many, many passes. And he also makes big plays with interceptions. I believe that is his first career touchdown. So at the end of the first quarter, we're up 14 to nothing, and things are looking pretty good. We'll be back to see the second quarter after this. One of the things this football team has got to learn is the killer instinct or how to put people away when we build the lead. So here we are at 14 to nothing. We go into the second quarter and have a very, very poor quarter. There were some fine plays in this drive by Willie White and Greg Gilbert there. But Tennessee was able to drive the ball on us. And here's a touchdown pass. And with the extra point, the score now goes to 14 to 7. Here's a heads-up play by David Smith again to Marco Battle. That's a 14-yard game. Murray Hill, as we continue to pound the way at him, we are a tough, sweet team. That's a four-yard game. Excellent throw and catch here. David Smith to Howard Cross. As Pierre Gould matures, we are working to find more ways to get the ball in his hands. And uh, this is a little counterplay that we've worked in previous, actually ran it some last year. Murray Hill up the middle for four yards. Murray. Uh, had another big day for us. Here's something that we take great pride in is our 
is our kicking game and our protection. And in this quarter alone, we get a field goal block off the corner. It looks like we might have kicked the ball a little bit low, and later on we get a punt block. Those are the things that get you beat. We were fortunate to be able to prevail because of a great defense there. We get them stopped again on third and short, and we force them to punt on fourth and two. Another big mistake in the kicking game. Our punt returners are instructed to stand with their heels on the 10-yard line, and if a ball goes over their head, they ought to let it go. And in this case, Murray made a critical error, which bottles us up again deep in our own territory. William Kent ran it out to the five, but that's as far as we could go with it. Here's a 56-yard punt by Chris Moore, who continues to give us good work for the most part. That's a nine-yard return. Here, Cobb is thrown for a loss by Tommy Cole, who had another outstanding day, and we make them punt the ball back to us again. Once again, we're bottled up deep in our territory as they get excellent coverage, and we're coming off the five. Excellent play by Vince Sutton here. Good present on the naked bootleg, and he runs for a first down to get us some breathing room. But we aren't able to continue. And again, the unforgivable error of a block punt occurs, and we're fortunate that it ends up being a safety. So we had a terrible quarter in the second quarter. Big play there by Derek Thomas. He brought the ball out of the hands of Francis, the quarterback. And another phenomenal 54-yard punt that rolls dead. Actually, it's down at our four-yard line is the way the half ends. So we go in with Tennessee having the momentum at the half and the score 14-9. to nine. We kick off the start of the third quarter. Philip Doyle kicks the ball deep into the end zone, which is precisely what we needed with Tennessee's great return people. Here's Reggie Cobb as they came out and really, I think, wanted to pound us running the ball if possible in the second half and then try to go deep. And once again, John Mangum is there with another key interception. One great play after another by our defense. Here's David Smith, complete to Robert Stewart. And we're really into a war at this point. If you weren't at the game, those 93,000 are, are lit up and, and uh, we continue to put ourselves and put our defense into very critically poor field position. Here's a fumble after a completion by Howard Croft and our defense just rises to the occasion time and time again as Gilbert and Hammond on the tackle for no gain. Great play by Kermit Kendrick to break up a pass across the middle. <clears throat> Remember now that these are veteran people, quarterback and receivers, that our defense is playing again. David Smith thought he could lock the ball over Keith DeLong there and throws the interception. Tennessee takes over our 13-yard line with all the momentum, and that was the biggest series of the football game. The defense up Tennessee and forced them to take the field goal so that the score now is 14 to 12 as we return the kickoff. I really felt that that was the biggest series of the game, keeping them out of the end zone at that point. We continue to have very poor field position. We tried some things, some reverses, to try to shift the momentum and get some misdirection, but Tennessee was up to the task and was able to stop us on all of them uh, in, the, in the third quarter. Here's Keith Davis off the left side again on a second and one, and Keith McKinch is in there for a three-yard loss. So on third and four, again, Tennessee having taken excellent field position, they cannot convert and make the first down. So we get the ball back. Always, always deep in our territory, inside the 10-yard line. Very determined running by Murray Hill there, but not enough for a first down, and the, the game just rocks back and forth with constant pressure on our defense. Spencer Hammond on the tackle for a one-yard gain. Here on second and nine. They do make some yardage here, but again, gang tackling. Forcing them to try to go for the first down. Always forcing them to fight for anything that they get. They did make the first down there. They're at our 40-yard line now. The defense stiffens. And here on the pitch to Cobb, 
he's not able to hang on, and we get a break. So we're going into the fourth quarter to score 14 to 12, and all that noise, with all that momentum, and I felt like that this was a quarter that we could hang our season on if we did what we were supposed to. We were able to continue to play the great defense and to get our offense going and to dominate the fourth quarter until the result was assured. We'll be back to see that after these messages. Back at the beginning of the fourth quarter now, and Tennessee once again with excellent field position on our 45-yard line, third and 15. This time we drop eight defenders, and Francis is not able to find anybody open, and so we get the football back. And again, we're starting to block a little better now, starting to wear them down. Our conditioning is starting to pay. We almost broke that, and Murray loses his footing. David Smith getting stronger as the game progresses. Excellent execution of the screen here and by the way David's knee held up fine after the twist in the early part of the game he came back to play well so we're beginning to move the ball and we're able to pump them down into poor field position and here Charles Gardner our freshman defensive back excellent coverage to force the punt and we get the ball back once again here's David Smith to Howard Cross very good execution for a 17-yard game. Now we're at Tennessee's 35-yard line. Second and 10 here. Excellent blocking on the right side. That's a five-yard game. Here off the left side, once again, getting movement, and it's a six-yard game. And we come to the 24-yard line. Second and 10 here. Now William Kennan at tailback. Good blocking up in there behind Larry Rose and Roger Schultz. John Sue Morgan. We were able to knock it down with second eight now at the 11. Here's David on the boot. He's got Howard Cross at the goal line, and there's interference. Now, actually, the touchdown play could be considered a busted play, but what it is more than that is a heads-up decision by David Castillo. We're attempting to hand off on the reverse to Pierre Goode, which we thought would be an excellent call, but our ball carriers are instructed but on this type exchange, if it appears that you're going to be hit on the exchange, do not hand it off. And on a great, determined, individual effort, David Castile makes the seven-yard run to take us into the end zone. And with the extra point, we now go up 21 to 12. Now Tennessee with the ball back again. Always dangerous with their great passing game, and they're still trying to run the ball, which is understandable with Reggie Cobb being the ball carrier that he is. Here on third and three, once again, Keith McKent, a great play. Able to keep them from making the first down. They had to go for it on fourth down, and they were able to convert for the first down. So now they're down at our 27-yard line. And Willie Wyatt comes up with one of the plays of the day as he sacks Francis. Now we force the field goal attempt from 48 yards, and it's no good. So we're back with decent field position here. Really, one of the few times in the game we were able to start out with field position, and we run the counter play to Pierre Goode for a seven-yard game. Here again, good block in there by Terrell Chapman. Off the right side for seven yards. This is a play that David Smith audible to. All day long, as Tennessee was stunning and blitzing, we realized that if we would just stay after him, we'd be able to get along one at some point. And of course, Murray Hill, once he gets into the open, is very difficult to hang on to. Watch Roger Schultz there with excellent sticking to the block. Now Murray makes the free safety miss, and he's off to the races. A 55-yard touchdown run, which brings the score to 28 to 12. But Tennessee's not through. And again, with an always dangerous offensive people, if we see the extra point here by Phillips, the score is now 28 to 12. So we squibbed the ball. Keith Davis has a little problem handling it here, which is part of the reason to squib, disrupt their timing so they can't get an 
organized kickoff return. Mike Smith makes the tackle. This time we don't get much pressure. A great throw and catch from Francis to Woods, one of the leading receivers in the country. And here you'll see, I think, a phenomenal catch with good coverage by Kermit Kendrick for the touchdown to make the final score as they make the two-point play 28 to 20, which is the way it ended. So an excellent fourth quarter performance, even though once again we put ourselves in difficult circumstances, the team had the courage and had the desire and executed well enough to win a tough football game. We'll hear from the players as Jack Flick speaks to them in the locker room. Willie White, big sack today. Tell us about that rushing the quarterback in that second and third quarter. Um, it was a very big sack. Um, they were zone protection, protecting, and uh, my only thing I could do was a bull rushing, and I bull rushed the center on back, and I was able to protect the quarterback, which um, when it's time to make a big play, I made it. Wayne Shaw, you scored the first touchdown in the game. You scored it in your home state. How did it feel? Great. Couldn't have done any more than that. Tell us about that play. This was a playoff guard, you know, and the lineman blew them all off. And I cut back, and there wasn't anybody there, so I said, hey, that is on. You got to get there. Uh, Greg Gilbert, uh, uh, really a good football game by a defensive team against a team that threw a lot. You linebackers today didn't uh, blitz much. You stayed back and played pass defense. How tough was that against a Tennessee team that sends four and five receivers out? It's very tough. They exchange the running backs for the quick wide receivers. And when you're out there, you know if you make one wrong move, those guys don't speak by you. Uh, Kermit Kendrick, uh, you made an interception right off the bat. I think it set the tone for our defensive play today. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about playing back in the secondary day. You play a lot of zone today. Well, we knew that uh, we, we couldn't line up and just run with those guys every play because they have outstanding speed and they're known for that. So we had to mix it up with the zone and, and play some man also. Well, that first throw was, uh, of course, was kind of like playing a man-to-man -man play because it, it, it was just a deep throw up the field. That yeah. first one you intercepted. They tried, to, they tried to get the fade over on me, and uh, I was just able to get my head and get, a, get my head around and look for the ball, and I uh, came up with a big play. A little pitch, and he fell down, and the ball hit me right, right in the numbers. All he had to do was run with it. Maybe one guy miss and score. You think that guy might catch you? Oh, yeah, I thought he was. You know, I, I, I knew when I got by Francis, I didn't see the other guy coming, but he hit me about the five, but I managed to get in. David Castile, a big win here at, at Tennessee today, and you uh, tell us about that fake reverse you ran for a touchdown. It was a key key touchdown for Alabama today. Well, um, it was. We, you know, we're fortunate to win the game, and we, uh, we faked it this time, and they bid on it, and you know, it was at an opportune time we came up with a score. So I think that um, we're on our way right now. We've been struggling, but I think that'll help a lot. I'm asked a lot of times about this TV show and how it's done. It's really very simple. I just sit down here and tell you the truth. It may not be pretty always. I hope it looks good more often than it looks. In the Southeast Eastern Conference, with a great chance to go in and reach all our goals from here. I would like to say thank you to the many, many people who have express concern and support over the last week. Don't worry, we just keep our nose to the grindstone, we're gonna get the job done. But it does mean a lot to get those incredible letters and all the nice phone calls and those kinds of things. The team really appreciates the great show of support from the true Alabama fans. And we've got Penn State coming to town. They've had injury problems. It's our first chance to go to Birmingham. We want you to be there and give us a great home field advantage. And thanks for being